so this is making the rounds right now, John Oliver's video on Cole. Right off the bat, let me say something. I think John Oliver's funny. I think he's <laughs> much, <laughs> I think Samantha B is about as funny as swimming through a pool of AIDS riddled needles. Actually, that's, that's kind of funny. It's actually kind of funny. Okay, but I do think John Oliver can Fox be Fox funny. Jared's doing it. And least. unlike Samantha B, he does make a genuine attempt to source some of his claims. However, people pass it along often because they think it's authoritative on the subject, and he has an English accent, so he sounds intelligent. Yeah, a true. lot of the, it's better than using Salon. Sure. <laughs> or or uh, uh, Daily Beast is their only sources that Samantha B does. But a lot of his claims are simply factually inaccurate. And in this case, with the Cole video, which is going viral. Uh, they're very misleading if they're not completely inaccurate. So he makes a few, it's a 20 minute video, but we wanna go through the top five claims made in his coal segment that are incorrect. Let's go to his first claim. Since the last fourth quarter of last year to, to most recently, added almost 50,000 jobs in the coal sector. In the month of May alone, almost 7,000 jobs. Okay, so the only problem there is that those numbers are bullshit. <laughs> The Bureau of Labor Statistics says the actual number of coal jobs created since last year has been just 1,300. So that 50,000 new jobs claim was off by 48,700. Okay, so we'll get to... His first claim here is that the jobs claim was way off. We'll get to the jobs created and why that's incorrect. I think that's down the list at number four. But right off the bat, we need to put this in context. Obama killed 83,000 coal jobs and he shut down 400 mines during his presidency. Barack Obama flagrantly bragged that he would shut down the coal business. This is important to note. You can talk about the jobs claims, but this is based on the idea that Donald Trump is going to bring back jobs that were shut off by Barack Obama. So that's the premise. He needs to refute that premise because that is based on the undeniable fact of jobs lost and of course, Barack Obama's rhetoric, uh, which you can look up for yourself. Let's go to his second claim where he says that coal jobs and he tries to move on through this so he doesn't substantiate it, but it's still just as important that it's, it, it, coal jobs are catastrophic for the environment. Trump claims coal is a huge priority for his White House, and let's set aside tonight the fact that it is environmentally catastrophic, which we shouldn't because it is. <laughs> Based on what? <laughs> Based on what? The simple idea that what, coal emits more? More CO2, it's dirtier? Listen, Germany has completely moved to green energy, and their CO2 emissions have gone up, not down. We've talked about that. Yeah. Okay, we've reduced our CO2 emissions significantly in the United States. So, based on the idea that it emits more, well, we don't necessarily see that, and okay, what's the alternative? What's the alternative to using our own resources, clean coal, or fracking, which you oppose, or offshore drilling, which you oppose, all of which are opposed by John Oliver and Barack Obama? All of them, what's the alternative? Being dependent on foreign energy? Places like Saudi Arabia, all throughout the Middle East or Asia where they have no environmental standards whatsoever. So here, he says it's catastrophic for the environment based on what? Prove it. And then what is the alternative? This is the real world. Let's go to his third claim where he says that coal mining was already on the decline despite Obama's laws. Not entirely inaccurate, but context. While coal mining jobs undoubtedly did decline under Obama, it's worth noting that coal mining jobs have also been declining for decades. Okay, so you know you've heard that term, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I am a fan of statistics. So a lot of people use that to say, I don't, be I don't believe in any facts, because those are damn lies and that's fake news. That's not what we're saying here, okay? <laughs> but you can take, if you take a graph and you expand the timeline or shrink it, you can take that, you can take it with the stock market. You know, gold has done this, right? Yeah. Gold has never been worth nothing, neither is Diet Coke. But if you came in at a certain <laughs> point and you sold at a certain point, you done got screwed. I bet gold awesome. was a safe hedge! <laughs> Should have gone with silver. So um, that's what's important here. Now, he's right. If you look since the 1920s, coal was on the decline. It's consistently been on the decline because there are more forms of energy than ever before. But here's what's important. For the first time in decades, right before Barack Obama came into office, there was a significant rise in the coal industry due to clean coal technology, cleaner coal technology, which was championed, by the way, by Barack Obama himself before he became president. <laughs> he was borderline a spokesperson for clean coal technology and using it here at home until, of course, he was against them when he became president of the United States. So let's yeah. move on to number four because it's integrally tied to claim number, uh, number three. 
that coal jobs went away because of wind and solar, which is the energy <laughs> of the... Don't laugh. Let's go to... Don't straw man this. Let him make the claim. I'm claim, the claim number four. Go away. There is perhaps no more dramatic evidence of coal losing out to solar energy than this. Work has begun to power the Kentucky Coal Mining Museum, not by coal, but by the sun. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I understand. That's funny. A coal museum being powered by solar energy. The Here's irony. The, thing. the irony. The ir no one's against houses up and down, you know, the next block having solar panels, having generators, or, or, or every, nearly every RV now has some form of solar it's panels. Ikea, as I saw yesterday. Ikea has <laughs> solar panels. Okay, but solar and wind have failed on a massive scale. You don't have the ability with countries or with cities to put it into a generator and consistently generate power. We've talked about this with our, our, our Sven computer, our intern from Germany. It's failed unbelievably in Germany. They have power droughts and then they have power surpluses where they sell their energy at a net negative level. Here's something else. Solar and wind, these green alternative energies, unlike coal, can only survive on massive government subsidies. Solar alone has gotten more than 10 times the subsidies of all other energy forms combined, wow. okay? And just like student loans, what this does, what these subsidies do, is they actually increase the cost of mm -hmm. energy. As you see with solar and wind, where their costs, when compared with unsubsidized, politically incorrect forms of energy, like nuclear, like clean coal, like natural gas, they can cost two, three, four, five, ten times more. So th this is important to note. Unsubsidized coal was growing, completely subsidized solar and wind has been failing miserably. Let's go to claim number five that Donald Trump can't bring back, because this is what it has to tie into for them. Of course. Let's use all this to bash sure. Trump. Donald Trump can't bring back any of these jobs at all due to automation. Not entirely false, but let's go. Uh, and the hard truth is, even if consumption wasn't declining, companies would still be cutting jobs as they are increasingly replacing miners with machines. Well, that's exactly true. That's actually true. Some of yeah. them. Now, we've talked about this on this show. In many industries, jobs are going away due to automation. Now, don't tell that to John Oliver, who's Mr. Fight for 15. We can't <laughs> automate the burger flipping patty machines because people need jobs. Now, all of a sudden, he's all about automation when it comes to targeting it's Trump for political motivations. So listen, it is true. Um, that we can't bring back all of the jobs. You can't do that in any industry as technology evolves. Mm -hmm. However, in the coal industry, thank God we have these statistics, due to uh, how severe Barack Obama's stifling of the entire industry was, uh, we are seeing a significant amount of jobs come back. Fortune now predicts that in addition to the jobs already created, coal jobs are on the rise this year with as many as 33,000 employees and contractors regaining their work who were laid off between 2014 and 2016. That is huge, okay? It's not the 83,000 that were directly cut by Barack Obama, but here's the context that matters. John Oliver says, no, coal is bad for the environment with no proof. And as you see, uh, the graph was going down, so it didn't have anything to do with Barack Obama, and Donald Trump can't bring back any of these jobs. Well, those aren't true, but let, let me paint you a picture and then a potential parallel universe, okay? So here's coal, all right? Coal, Barack Obama becomes president, proudly says, I'll put you out of business, okay? Yeah. So coal industry, you cannot open any more mines. As a matter of fact, we're gonna stifle you with such suffocating legislation, you are going to close 400 mines. We are going to get 83,000 people laid off. You can't open any new mines, we're gonna hit you with new taxes, new regulations that make it very, very difficult. By the way, solar, wind, green energy, we are going to subsidize you entirely. Anything you want, doesn't even matter if you can't turn a dollar, doesn't even matter if you have no intention of running a business, Solyndra, we will subsidize you to the tune <laughs> of hundreds of billions of dollars. Coal, green, wind, solar, let's compete, <laughs> okay? Now a parallel universe, President Trump, coal is already on the increase because of new technology in coal, and we have a government that says, wow, this is great, kind of like fracking. We now have a cleaner way to go about mining coal, our own natural resources. We don't need to be dependent on foreign resources. Okay, we're going to allow you as long as you stay within the market regulations, and of course, keep your workers safe and keep your environmental impact to a minimum. We're going to actually allow you to do coal. That's fine, we're not gonna shut anything down. You operate on an honest profit margin. By the way, wind and solar, you figure it out. We're not giving you any more of our money. Both of you figure it out. Let's see who can operate on an honest profit margin and create the best form of most efficient energy, compete. 
That changes the graph. Let me give you an example. Let's say the government comes in today and says, louder with Crowder. OK, listen, we're going a lot to allow you to exist, all right? But you can't create any new mugs. You can't sell any. You can generate no new mug clubs. You can keep most of your subscribers. But matter of fact, we're going to shut down uh, 4,000 of them. We're going to shut down 4,000 of those fired? accounts. We're not going to help you. As a matter of fact, you can't make any new hires. We're going to make sure that you have to fire people. You can still exist, but you have to follow these regulations. But Bill O'Reilly, God love him, who's starting his own online network, we're going to give you $10 billion. Louder with Crowder, Bill O'Reilly, compete. See how that works? And this is why when people like John Oliver look at this and they look, they're talking about people's jobs. It may not mean a whole lot to you, but 83,000 jobs was a lot to the people who were in the coal industry. Certainly the 33,000 people who could gain their jobs back. And when you see a John Oliver who uns completely unsubstantiated makes claims, of course sets out with a premise and smugly makes claims about the coal industry and how this is how it's going to have to go. Doesn't matter if you don't like it. This is where technology is going. This is the future and the government is going to subsidize it and you just have to get on board because there are people like me, there are people like you. Can you see why people think of you as an elitist, as a pompous prick, as an establishment type? Especially when you, oh my friend John Oliver, use the Donald Trump loopholes to buy your $10 million mansion. I don't know what. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the letters that spell out subscribe. Also, YouTube, somewhere in this box, has a recommended video for you. Now, I don't know what they recommend. But my guess is if you're here, it's going to be something twisted and something you don't want your parents to see. If you want to see the uh, entire show from which this clip is taken, click one of the boxes playing next to me. That is the full episode or join the Mug Club for the Daily Show. The reason the Daily Show isn't on YouTube is because, um, well, YouTube doesn't like some of the things we say.